Hi, I'm Moises Pacheco from Shape Robotics. Welcome to the first tutorial video in a series of videos to help you guys get started with the system. In this first video, I'll describe the contents of the entry set, then I'll show you how to set up the system on a PC, and later we'll dive into the software where I'll show you how to sketch your first program by using blocks. So by the end of this tutorial, you should have a good understanding of what Fable is and how to program your modules. So let's get started. Okay, so let's see what comes in an entry set. So the first thing you guys uh, will notice when you take the lid off is that the lid has a connector in the middle of it. So this will allow you to use the lid as a stand. Uh, and the contents of the box look like this. So let's take the active module out first. So this is the joint module. So the joint module has a connector on each of the, of the ends and uh, the connectors are four-way redundant so that means that you can plug it in uh, in four different ways on each of the sides of the module so let's set it up for here uh, now um, then the next part that i would like to talk about is the dongle so the dongle is the part of the system that will allow your pc to talk to robots so you will need a usb cable uh, for that and then you have a USB charger and a micro USB cable that you can use to charge up active modules like the joint module here. Then the last part of the, of the box um, is a Fable Lego converter. So uh, with this one, you can plug it into your Fable robot and then it will allow you to sketch up ideas with uh, using Lego bricks. One of the contents that is not included in the box, but it is part of the entry set, is uh, this passive module. So with this passive module, you can plug in uh, modules in four different ways. So you can plug it here, or here, or here, or here. And you can also combine other passive modules to build more complex robots with it. So now I will jump into uh, giving you a more detailed description of the features of the active parts of the system. So, let's dive a little bit deeper into what the joint module can do. Um, on the back side, it has a switch. So if you turn it to uh, the left, then that means that you, you turn the module on. So you can see that the button here shines in a red color. So if you press it, you can change it uh, to different colors. So what this means is that each of the colors represents a radio channel. So you can pair modules by putting things in the same color. So if there are several modules, like this one over here, and there in, both of them are in the pink channel, then that means that you can control both of these modules with a pink dongle. And if you change some of the colors, then you can control them with a cyan or light blue uh, dongle. So this allows us to build teams in a classroom environment, so there's a pink team and a blue team and so on. Uh, another feature of the joint module is when it's off, so if you switch this uh, switch back to its uh, off position, then you can press the button and it will tell you the battery level. So this one is telling us that it's fully charged because you can see that it's, uh, there's a green light while this one here has a uh, almost depleted battery. So you can see the red color on the button. Another thing that you can see on the joint module is the ID. So these IDs that you see in the back, they're unique. So And uh, this one is called TPA and this is called RPA. So when you're coding, this name is going to be important because that will determine which module will do what part of the code. So which, which module executes what? Uh, and other than that, it has two motors. So it has an X motor and a Y motor, and they're labeled here. So this is the X one, this is the Y one. And each of the motors receives uh, orders in the degrees of uh, plus and minus 90 degrees. So this is uh, one end and the other. Right? So that concludes uh, the features of the joint module. Okay, so now we're gonna set up the system uh, on the PC. The first thing we have to do is we have to plug in the dongle into the computer. So let's put the USB cable on the dongle and then let's plug it into the 
computer's USB port. So as you can see here, the dongle ended up lighting blue. And if I turn on my joint module, you can see that it ended up lighting uh, pink. So what I have to do is I have to put the dongle and then uh, press on it till I can see the same color channel. And once I match the same, the same color, then that means that they, they're connected. Um, I can do also the other way around where I can try to pair the system by using, by pressing the joint modules button. So now that they're in the same color channel, they're paired. So let's start uh, to dig into the software and start programming. So now that we're on the PC, the only thing that you have to do is you have to double click on this Fable icon to launch the software. If you don't have the software installed, please check the description of the video where I added some links to the PC and to the Mac version of the software. So the first thing I would like to talk about is the menu bar and where we have a run code button and we also have a save code, an open file, a delete code, uh, settings, and then the camera so you can have access to the webcam on your laptop or PC if you have a USB uh, enabled one. And then we have different complexity levels of the code. So we have the simple version where you get this categories here and you have a certain amount of blocks. But if I change it to the full version, you will see that there's uh, much more categories uh, and there's also more blocks within each of them. Uh, we also have a Danish and an English version for now, but I'll stick to the English version in this case. So if we, um, if we look into the status bar, we'll see that the server has been running for 130 seconds. So that means that the PC, is run, the PC app is running properly. We also have a program status and it says stopped. That means that we don't have any programs that are actually running at this point. We also have a dongle connection status and that says that it's okay. So it's up and running. And we also have a module section where you, we can see that we have one module detected and it's the joint TPA and it has 89% battery and it's ready to be programmed. So if we go back into the block sections and click on the control one, Let's drag the while block and the while block will allow us to keep the PC running inside of this loop. If we don't use this block, then we risk the, the PC being too fast at running the code and then exiting. And it will be much more faster than what the joint module can do. So it's very likely that you won't see the robot do anything. So to be on the safe side, I would recommend you to always use the while block. So in this case, we have our action block. So we want to make the robot move to a position. And let's uh, put that position to, let's say, zero, 0, So that's a 0 in the X motor and 0 in the Y motor. And the values that you can put in is from minus 90 to plus 90. And the last value that we have to set is the name of the joint module. And in our case, I'll set the TPA because this is the module that's detected at this point. So if I press play, what I should see now is that the module will go into a straight position. So that's a zero, zero position. And I'll stop the code for now. And then I'll add an extra block because I want to make the robot move back and forth between two different positions. So if I just put here 45 and 45 and then TPA, and press play. I can see that the robot is not actually moving between 0, 0 and 45, 45. It's kind of like random, the movement that I see. So the reason that the robot is doing this is because we're not allowing the motors to actually reach those positions. And the computer is, move, is setting, sending commands really fast. So we're setting the 0, 0 command, then the 45, 45, and then back to the 0, 0, and so on. And this is why we see this random movement. So if I put a weight block in between both and also I put it at the end of the loop, that means that when the PC is reading the code, it will read move to the 0, zero position, then it will wait one second, then move to the 45 and 45 and wait another second. And then it will go back again into the first block and then read it. 
So it will always have one second in between each of the actions. So if I press play, now I should see the robot actually move back and forth between these two positions. So I'll stop the code for now and then I'll save it as lesson lesson one. Thanks for watching. This concludes our first Fable tutorial. If you have any questions or suggestions, let us know in the comments below. To keep up with the latest news on Fable, subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You can find the links in the description video. Have fun and I'll see you next time.